may peace be on all of you myself dr majid khan associate professor rop mate dr jd pawar college of pharmacy karwan nasik welcome to all of you in previous two lecture we have covered two topic of cardiotonic in lecture 1 uh, i will uh, i was cover chemistry and sar of cardiotonic in lecture 2 source and common name of cardiac glycoside now today we have discussed lecture 3 that is mechanism of action toxicity of cardiac glycoside and other cardiotonic drug so now let us start this video that is lecture number 3 learning outcome of this video after completion of this course student able to understand mechanism of action toxicity of cardiotonic and its treatment remember the name and understand mechanism of action and use of other cardiotonic drugs so regarding mechanism of action of digitalis or cardiotonic so digitalis compound are potent inhibitor of cellular sodium potassium atpase pump so in this diagram there are two pump is shown first one is sodium potassium atpase right hand side and another pump is sodium calcium pump left side so this sodium potassium pump moves sodium ion out of the cell and bring potassium into the cell this sodium potassium pump transport three molecule of three molecule of sodium sodium for every two potassium ion enters the cell on left side sodium and calcium exchanger exchange three molecule of sodium for each calcium ion the direction of movement of these ion depend on membrane potential as the intracellular sodium increases the movement of calcium out of the cell decreases this leads to accumulation of intracellular sodium causes subsequent accumulation of intracellular calcium because of decrease exchange pump activity so here the sodium potassium pump exchange the three molecule of sodium with two molecule of potassium and on left side that is sodium and calcium pump here also there is exchange of three molecule of sodium for each calcium ion so the target of digitalis cardiac glycoside is this sodium potassium pump so cardiac glycoside inhibit this sodium potassium atpase pump so due to which due to inhibition of this sodium potassium atpase pump there is accumulation of intracellular sodium which prevent extrusion of calcium and increase the calcium entry through the calcium channel overall the, there is a increase in intracellular calcium more calcium stored in sarcoplasmic sar, sarcoplasmic reticulum also increases which causes increase the force and velocity of contraction so it is the mechanism of action of cardiac glycoside so it simply inhibit sodium potassium atpase pump which increase sodium concentration intracellular sodium concentration which increase intracellular calcium concentration and which leads to the forceful contraction so it is the mechanism of action of cardiac glycoside now toxicity and treatment of cardiac glycoside it is generally accepted that the toxicity of cardiac glycoside is due to inhibition of sodium potassium pump 
which result in increase intracellular sodium and calcium hypokalemia that is low potassium level it is due to the co administration of thiazide diuretic and glucocorticoid further worsen the condition this leads to increase the concentration of calcium leads to cardiac arrhythmia therefore it is said that thiazide is not given along with the cardiac glycoside so here the main side effect is that is cardiac arrhythmia sodium potassium pump already inhibited and hypokalemia further inhibit this pump causes intracellular build up of sodium which leads to increase in intracellular calcium level this high level of calcium responsible for observed cardiac arrhythmia now the treatment of this cardiac arrhythmia so depending upon the types of arrhythmia treatment is there which is tabulated so in first case tachy arrhythmia caused by chronic use of digitalis and diuretic treatment involve infusion of potassium chloride 20 millimole per hour intravenous or give orally in milder cases second type ventricular arrhythmia treatment involve use of lidocaine it is a drug lidocaine third one is supraventricular arrhythmia treatment involve propranol may be given intravenously or orally depending on the urgency third one is av block and bradycardia here atropine 0.6 to 1. 2 mg intramuscular cardiac pacing so it is the toxicity and treatment of cardiac glycoside now the other drug which are used as a cardiac tonic which is not a glycoside and that first one is nesiritide also called as hbnp that is human b type natriuretic peptide that is natriuretic it is manufactured from the e coli using recombinant dna technology it having 32 amino acid it is formulated as citrate salt and provided in sterile single use vial each 1.5 mg vial contain white lipolysed powder for intravenous administration after reconstitution so if we see nesiritide act as a natriuretic natriuretic means which increase sodium excretion through the urine aldosterone is a part of renin angiotensin aldosterone system activation of this system occur when there is decrease in blood flow to kidney due to loss of blood volume or decrease in blood pressure renin causes production of angiotensin second which stimulate aldosterone release which causes retention of sodium and water in blood from kidney and increasing blood volume and blood pressure regarding reconstitution or preparation of this compound so it is available as a reconstitution solution for sol uh, solution for reconstitution so 1.5 mg vial of natricor the trade name of this drug by adding 5 ml diluent which may be 5% dextrose injection or 0.9 0.9% sodium chloride injection after reconstitution of vial each ml contain 0.32 mg of drug then this add this solution to the 250 ml of plastic intravenous bag this leads to solution of 6 microgram per ml so it is a procedure or preparation of solution of this vial so again i repeat it is available as a vial 1.5 mg vial 
so here there is an addition of 5 ml of diluent this diluent may be 5% dextrose injection or 0.9% sodium chloride injection after reconstitution of vial each ml contains 0.32 mg of drug then this solution added to 250 ml plastic intravenous bag which leads to solution of 6 microgram per ml Regarding mechanism of this drug, so this drug bind to guanylate cyclase that is GC of vascular muscle and endothelial cell. Le this leading to increase intracellular concentration of cyclic GMP that is cyclic guanosine monophosphate. This cyclic GMP serve as a secondary messenger to dilate vein and arteries so the mechanism of action of this drug is it binds to GC which causes increased intercellular concentration of cyclic GMP and which causes dilation of artery and veins so as we discuss this drug act as a natriuretic which increase the sodium excretion through the urine so aldosterone which is a part of our renin angiotensin system activation of this system occur when there is a decrease in blood flow to the kidney due to loss of blood volume or decrease in blood pressure renin causes production of angiotensin second which stimulate aldosterone release which causes retention of sodium and water in blood from kidney and increasing blood volume and blood pressure. Now next drug that is Bucentane and Tezocentane. So it is the structure of these two drugs. Regarding mechanism of these drugs endothelin 1 that is ET1 short form ET1 it is a 21 amino acid peptide that is produced by vascular endothelium it is very potent vasoconstrictor that bind to smooth muscle endothelium receptor the receptor of ET1 is two type ETA and ETB as shown in figure so here the point is ET1 that is endothelian 1 it is amino acid and it is a vasoconstrictor effect it have two receptor ETA and ETB this receptor ETA and ETB are coupled with GQ protein and receptor activation leads to formation of IP3 that is inositol triphosphate which causes release of calcium by sarcoplasmic reticulum and increase smooth muscle contraction and vasoconstriction as shown in this image so this drug simply act as an antagonist on ET receptor so this drug act on this receptor block this receptor and causes opposite effect that is also dilation or simply dilation so the target of these two drug is endothelian receptor uses of this drug Bucentane is a non-selective ET1 receptor antagonist. Non-selective means it blocks both ETA and ETB used in treatment of pulmonary hypertension. It mostly blocks ETA receptor. Tezocentane used in congestive heart failure but it not improve dyspnoia or reduce risk of non-fatal cardiovascular event 
thank you so it is about the cardio tonic so this cardio tonic chapter we cover in three lecture first lecture that is chemistry and sar of cardio tonic in second lecture common name and common name and source of cardiac glycoside in third lecture mechanism and toxicity of cardiac glycoside and other drug use as a cardio tonic so it is about the cardio tonic chapter thank you thank you very much if you have any query you can write in comment box thank you